gonna be fun, guys. Hey, everybody! Welcome to the Wandell Family Adventures. Today, we're here with uh, my in-law, Kiki. Gotta love her. So this is Leslie's sister, and that's that's her daughter back there, Reagan. And Ellie, stick your head over here. Say hi. hi. That's my daughter, Ellie. You know her from all the other videos we've done. But uh, we're on our way out to Ballinger, Texas, because we're gonna be staying the night at the Old Park Hotel for a ghost hunting adventure. Now, um, for those of you that don't know, we're ghost hunting nerds. We love this stuff. Uh, you know, regardless of what anybody else wants to say, we are fascinated by it. We love to get the tinglies and the scaredies. And I'm I'm of the the, the the nature of make me pee my pants and it's worth every penny. <laughs> so uh, hasn't happened yet, but we'll see. So a little little cool things about the uh, the old Park Hotel. So it is in Ballinger, Texas. Um, it was built in July. Uh, and sold but in an auction so like the, I guess the original owners never got to take possession of it in 1886 so wow. this thing is well over a hundred years so it's almost 150 years old so it's 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 really really crazy so it was a two-story house at one time uh, it's had a bunch of different families uh, that, that live in it uh, let's see uh, it used to be part of the old city um, buildings they used to use it for that uh, it was a brothel at one point yeah um, yeah <laughs> it was a hotel it's been a schoolhouse uh, and it, it was actually a brothel twice so and one of them wasn't a legal brothel <laughs> um, let's see okay. the people that own it now um, the they uh, they let people come and stay in it to, because it is haunted so it, there's some things that have happened to it and that's one of the reasons it's changed over hand so many times is because of all the stories that have happened there of, of the haunted activity so i i can't wait to to get there and uh it's gonna be great it's gonna be great i can't wait to so see great. there now you guys have already done uh, a ghost adventure before right i did we went to uh miss molly's in the stockyards it is a for those that don't know, the stockyards is Fort Worth Stockyards. Yeah, Fort Worth Stockyards, and it's a uh, it's an old brothel basically. And Miss Josie, Co Texas. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Miss Josie was the madam. This was her establishment. And when Reagan and I went a few months back, Reagan and I got to stay in Miss Josie's room. Nice. And Miss Josie loves kids, so she made sure that. Reagan and I were safe. She made sure that we were we were good, even though we didn't we didn't sleep at all that night. But <laughs> not really. At that place, it was it was pretty intense. Nice. It, it was pretty intense, but it, it was amazing. It was amazing. The history on it. Time. Yeah, it was a good first it, time. Yeah, it, it was, it was like fabulous. So we can't wait to get here because this place is literally out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, I guess at one point this town was kind of more of a, a mining town, a gas town or something. Uh, why it's just out in the middle of nowhere. Um, so there's not a lot around it. It's literally a couple of buildings and that's it. And it's been an abandoned town for a long time. So there, there's not a lot there because again, it is an abandoned town. Um, which is kind of crazy. We're going to a ghost hotel in a ghost town. <laughs> so on that note, we'll, uh, we'll see you when we get there. It's not unusual to have fun with anyone to the right. But when I see you hanging about with anyone, <laughs> it's not unusual to see me cry.
<laughs> if you guys type up in Google and type up Texas most notorious outlaws, there is this website that's going to come up. And it's going to talk about the worst Old West outlaws here in Texas. Three of them are associated with Ballinger. Oh, Lord. Okay. Little old Ballinger that you guys are seeing here. Three of them are associated with. Who has heard of John Wesley Harding? Anybody? Oh, yeah, the Harding name? Brothers. I've heard huh? of them. Yeah, the Harding Boys, yeah. Okay. Well, John Wesley Harding. Who has heard of Manny Clements? Anybody? Mm -hmm. Okay. Manny Clements and John Wesley were cousins. What? Ran, ran together. Anybody heard of uh, Jim to Deacon Miller? Mm -hmm. I've heard his name. Okay. Also related to their family. Oh. All three of them ran together throughout Texas Bruh. and did a lot of what we call dastardly deeds. Oh. A lot of cattle rustling, a lot of different things. Basically, uh, a lot of outlaw stuff for years killed quite a few people. Oh. Mm -hmm. Reach a little excerpt out of the paper from the Ballinger Eagle, April 2nd, 1887. This is a copy of the newspaper. Manny Clements killed. Pistol shot was heard near night Tuesday afternoon in the Alamo Saloon on 7th Street. We're on 6th Street. 7th Street is on the other side of the courthouse. Love so basically somewhere on the other side of the courthouse this other saloon existed. It was soon learned that the ever-present six-shooter had got in its deadly work on Manny Clements, a stockman in McCulloch County, who has been in Ballinger several weeks shipping stock. Elements Clements was a first cousin to John Wesley Hardin, and like the noted John Wesley, had spent more than one man to his long... This is funny how they wrote these stories. For the last several years, had led a quieter life than in his younger days, having married and settled down. The evidence taken at the inquest by Judge Hargroff Tuesday night and Wednesday morning discloses substantially the following facts. Deputy Sheriff Joe Towson, Sheriff Formwall, and Manny Clements were in the Alamo Saloon. The two later had been drinking and Formwalt had fired off his pistol in Hamilton and Con Connor's saloon a short while before. Townsend was in endeavoring to secure his pistol. Formwalt was forming his pistol and Townsend had seized it. When Clements, Clements with an oath ordered him to stop and was leveling a pistol which had in the meantime been drawn on Townsend. Retaining his hold, basically they go on. Townsend instantly fired, the ball entering about an inch above Clements' left eye. Ranging backward in effort, Clements fell to the floor in a sitting posture and immediately expired. His pistol was in his hand at full cock after he died. So it's funny how they write these stories, but the reality is that they were here. Clements, for some reason, actually, let me leave this on, ran as an outlaw for years across Texas doing things. He became a little older, started settling down just like they mentioned in this article. He decided to run for office here in Ballinger. Oh. And he lost. And shortly, a few weeks after, that's when this situation happened in that saloon. We don't know why they might be here, but paranormal evidence has shown that they are here. And a few weeks after um, Clements was killed in the saloon, Jim to Deacon Miller, remember all these three ran together, decides to go after the marshal that killed Clements in the saloon, decides to ambush him right outside of, Ant of uh, Ballinger. Jim to Deacon Miller was known for carrying a 12 gauge shotgun. He ambushed the marshal trying to kill him off a of horseback. Shot him, obviously he thought he killed him because the shotgun does a lot of damage. Hit him in the shoulder, knocked him off the horse. The marshal ends up surviving. The deacon, this is funny about deacon, he liked to call himself deacon because he hung around with church people. Kept his other side to him. But when he was, I guess, putting out that he was this good person, he was doing all these bad things. Basically a secret. And he ran a, basically a second life. And right after he tried to kill the marshal, he ended up running off and ends up in Kansas with three other men. And a mob catches up with them, knows what he did, took all three men into a barn up in Kansas to lynch them, stood up all three men up on a, on a pails. This is how people did things back then. Threw nooses around their neck 
And while they're hanging the other two guys, Jim Miller kicked out his own bucket and said, let her rip, and hung himself. We don't know why he's here, but the evidence proves that people, what they've gotten is that Clemens and Miller are both here. Oh, um, so if you guys are investigating tonight, yell out Deacon, yell out Manny Clemens, and see what happens. There's a, one of the things I'm kind of thinking about, and several people are thinking about, is this was a brothel twice throughout history. They might have had a favorite girl here. That might have been something. You guys have seen Lonesome Dove before, mm -hmm. right? The concept behind it. Mm -hmm. So that might be what it was about. But for some reason, they're here, along with many others. Um, so that's a possibility. So remember, while we're investigating tonight, you can throw that out. Um, several pe This building obviously has gone through a lot of transformations, and I'll tell you in a second what's what's happened with it. But people see a lot of kids in here. A lot of children. Our 16-year-old daughter um, actually doesn't like to come back because of a sighting she had in here. Uh, when we bought the building, she uh, the downstairs bathroom, the only downstairs bathroom is over here, so she would have to cross this hallway. And you guys are going to see how long it goes back there, but she, we usually leave that curtain open where you could see all the way back. And she would always look back, and one day she looks back, just about the time she was getting over her fear of everything, and there was a little boy sitting on the concrete floor back there playing with Jax. And he looked up at her the moment she looked at him. And he made eye contact, and I don't know, for some reason she feels nervous about that, and she won't come up here. <coughs> we started figuring, we were trying to figure out, okay, why are there all these kids siding? Because there's a little boy, Benny, there's several other kids that pop up in here. They look just like you and me. Well, we came across this old article at one point, and it says in this old article, which we have more of it, but it says the location of the first building housing students in the new town of Ballinger cannot be established with certainty. Most of those who remember think that the first building was located across the street from the courthouse where the Park Hotel now stands. Oh, oh. So back in the day, this could have been one of the first schools here in Ballinger. Two story white house, then you get this other part added on, and then somewhere along the park, this Keel family comes in, and I'll show you the pictures when we come up real fast. But the Keel family bought this in 1922. Uh, and this was the present owner that we bought the building from. This was her family. They lived in here five generations from 1922 wow. on. And uh, when we say second brothel, it's an interesting story because World War II came around. And as they went through their generations, uh, one of the daughters, her husband, went to World War II. And they had the building at the time. Well, they, they sold the building at that point to go to World War II and then they have ended up in Maine for a few years. Well when they came back immediately after World War II, they came back and bought, they wanted to see if the building was available again so they wanted to put it back in the family and guess what? It was available. As soon as they got it, men were walking in there going, where are the girls? The second brothel, <laughs> the second brothel, the first brothel was in that part, the wood part, upstairs and downstairs second one was back in this part. So back in these concrete rooms, guess what was going on? Yeah. Step. The, the guy does not like women. That'd be correct. Cool. He's like a doctor or physician or... Please don't attack me. Is this an old, old crotchety dude? Um, I'm still here. So, you know how... <laughs> well, the you know closer we get, the hotter it is. <laughs> you know how when Dan was telling the story about the old scrawny naked man? I'm wondering if it looked like doggy. That's what I said. Okay. And I made the I'm going to stand on your next to you, okay? Mm -hmm. Kiki's right here. 
Yeah. All right. This does not phase me. I'm just like, it's okay. You're fine. Ellie, Ellie, you're okay. She's okay. Should've put some tape over one of these red LEDs. This sucker's brighter than I thought it was. <laughs> All right. Henry, how you doing? Uh, are you in here with us? Can you make the, uh, you, you've done this before. You know how these K2s work? This scared the crap out of me for a second. I was like, holy crap. A few new people never been here before. We thought we'd give them the tour, and you know, we, we know how much you love company in here. So we thought we'd try here first and see if you might wanna might wanna communicate with us. You know, show these nice folks that these K2s actually work. Oh, I was gonna be reading just one of them all. Did you move it that fast you're gonna do readings? Oh, I wasn't listening. It's getting colder right next to me. Is someone at the door watching us, like you like to do? Is someone at the door watching us, like you like to do? We're about to catch an EVP, but we're not exactly sure what it says. It sounds like no, man. You mad at me? Can you do something else? Can you give a knock on the wall? Did y'all hear that? The word yes just came from that corner. Is it this corner? Over? Yeah, with this over in this corner that way. I, I, did you just say yes? Can you say that again? Was that you? Uh, that K2 just went on. We're in the other room. Is that you in the closet right there? Waiting for us to leave? Where's Elliot? Sitting on the couch. Can you knock on the wall, Henry, please? Give us a knock on the wall and we'll, uh, we'll go on to the next room if you want. <coughs> we now leave the workshop and enter the downstairs hallway. This is where some strange things begin to happen. Is this the kid room we were in earlier? No, the the one where we were thought we were talking to a kid. Yeah. Uh, no. It's one more down. One more down. Whoa. Whoa. What? Do that again. It's just light. It will not hurt you. At this moment, I was standing between two doorways in this hallway. As I was looking down the hallway, it felt like something was breathing down my neck. It was very strange and very uncomfortable. It's just light. Oh, I can't stand there between those doors. <laughs> that was freaky. That's why I don't. <laughs> I'm looking at something in here, and I can feel something breathing down my neck from the other one. Stand there. It's cool. Yeah. It's really cool. Come back here. 
Come back towards me. Feel the temperature change. Oh, wow. That's significant. Just by going back about four feet in this hallway, the temperature dropped 10 degrees. There's something you want to tell us. You can whisper it in my ear. I have really excellent hearing. What we're watching and you can't see on video are heads peeking out from behind the doorways. And at this moment, Kristen gets touched. Will the red light on that get brighter for any reason, or should it be constant? It should be constant. Watch the roof. I see it. What we're watching on the roof is the red light from the REM pod vibrating across the ceiling. It almost looks like fire. Later on in the night, we move into a downstairs room and begin a spirit box isolation session. Leave. Why? Not till you give us your name. No, we weren't leaving after that. I don't want your name. I don't want to know why you were in this room, why this room is so tall. You're welcome. Tall. You're boring me. You're literally boring me. Why? Or what's your name? You're boring me. Stop. Is it that hard to think of? What are you doing? You. What year is it? Get out. That's getting kind of old. Can we get to the question portion of this session? All right. Um, who's the president right now? Now. No. Your mom's behind you. She's close. Because you're not amounting to anything just like Bang. This. Bang. Like, if you want to communicate with us, I need you to answer questions. And I'll quit playing around as well. So, what's your name? Okay. The fuck? That's the same question. You just got shoved. You want to sit down right there? Okay. Yeah. yeah. It just seriously growled. He just got shoved. Huh? He I just, just got, got shoved, shoved. like he, almost tripped and fell on my he ass. Just, it, it just growled. So. We had many more experiences throughout this investigation, including being touched, an unexplained mist, and shadow people. Unfortunately, we did not have night vision cameras, but that has changed. And in our next ghost adventure, we will peer into the night and see what lurks in the dark. Join us next time on the Wandell Family Adventures Ghost Hunting Edition.